116 people landed on an island off the coast of North Carolina. They established a foothold long before the Jamestown colony was founded in Virginia, before the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. But the fate of the Roanoke settlement remains a mystery. Is it possible for all these people, all these buildings, this entire community, to disappear without a trace? Great civilizations have flourished and then disappeared. The culture of Egypt testifies to man's skill in engineering. The ancient Greeks left us beauty in form and architecture. The Mayan pyramids pay tribute to a race that blossomed and then mysteriously disappeared. Modern archaeologists have used the remains to decipher how these civilizations began. But there is an island off the Carolina coast that even today still hides the secret beginnings of America. The story begins in England, 1587. Elizabeth has been queen for almost a quarter of a century. Her favorite courtier is Sir Walter Raleigh, a man of ambitious vision. Sir Walter implores Elizabeth to allow him a bold venture, establish a foothold in the new world, which has until now been dominated by Spain. With her approval, he gathers 116 men, women, and children to brave an ocean crossing. A colony is established on Roanoke Island, just off North Carolina. are some of the first houses up when a problem becomes apparent. If the colony is to survive, more supplies are needed from England. On a clear day in August, 1587, Governor John White bids goodbye to his beloved daughter, Eleanor, to her husband, Ananias Dare, and to his only grandchild, Virginia Dare, nine days old the first English child born in this new land. Every colonist is aware of the dangers of an Atlantic crossing for a man of White's age. Meanwhile, the governor hides his anxiety about this handful of people being virtually defenseless. They are extremely vulnerable. The threat of attack by unfriendly Indians, who had already killed one of their people, the specter of a long, cold winter. Could the colonists plant enough food to ward off starvation? Will Governor White or anyone else ever see them again? When Governor White arrived in England, he rushed about London, frantically trying to line up the necessary supplies at a ship for the voyage back. He wanted to return to Roanoke as quickly as possible to ease the colonists' worry about being totally isolated. The governor's timing could not have been worse. England is gearing up for a war to the death with Spain, whose mighty armada is poised to strike. Sir Walter Raleigh beseeches the Queen to send supplies, but she will not release a single ship. None of his pleading can force the Queen to change her mind. Spain's King Philip has assembled the greatest fleet the world had ever known. 137 ships with 30,000 men aboard. 
He hopes to crush the English Navy. When the battle is joined in the English Channel, the unwieldy Spanish galleons are no match for the longer range English ships, whose captains include such famous seamen as Drake, Hawkins, Raleigh, and Frobisher. The Spanish Armada is soundly beaten. The English don't lose a single ship. The Spanish, more than 50. Britannia now truly rules the waves. Despite the victory, it is three years before Governor White can convince someone to take him back to Roanoke. White is gravely concerned. Surely, by now, someone from the colony should have sighted the ships or heard the signals. Cautiously, they approach the beach. After three long years and so many disappointments, White nervously awaits the realization of his dreams. But where are his people? Knowing the colonists would fear an attack by the Spaniards, White orders the piping of a familiar English tune to reassure anyone hiding in the woods. Still, there is no response. For the first time, a sense of fear pervades his thinking. The trail inland is familiar, but empty. As they move deeper into the woods, the landing party fears the possibility of an attack by Indians. Governor White remembers that although the Indians were at first peaceful, a killing had created tensions that could well have flared into violence after he left. The first sign of any habitation is not familiar to White. He finds a stockade. Presumably, it encloses the village. His hopes soar. But as he enters the gate, he is stunned. There is no sign of life. Eerie silence. The compound is overgrown. Nothing remains. Even the sturdy buildings are gone. If the Spaniards had burned the buildings, where are the charred remains? If the colonists had been ambushed, there should be bleached bones, something to tell the tale. There is nothing.
finally, one sign, a carved word, Croatoan. Before the governor had sailed, everyone agreed that if the colonists were to move away, they would leave a clue. Did this word mean they had gone to nearby Croatoan Island? The search continues into the night. Three more letters, C, R, O, are found carved on a tree, but nothing to tell what happened. Determined to go to Croatoan Island the following day, they return to their ship. A terrible storm comes up, driving them so far out to sea, they are forced to turn back to England. Governor White's anguish is unbearable. He was so near to those he loved, but kept from them by a cruel sea. Governor White later dies and is buried in England without ever learning his family and friends will one day be known as the Lost Colony of Roanoke. What did happen to them? Did they go to Croatoan? In Search Of explores the possible answers next. The single word Croatoan that Governor White found would seem to indicate that the lost colony attempted a move to the nearby island of that name. While the governor never lived to search there himself, others who did, in colonial as well as modern times, found no indication that the colonists had ever even been there. No buildings, no bricks, no tools, nothing. What happened to the lost colony? This has been a matter for speculation by laymen and historians ever since that time. Author historian David Stick, who lives on nearby Cape Hatteras, has spent years trying to solve the riddle. There have been many theories. One, probably the most prevalent one, is that they were attacked by the Spaniards. The Spaniards, having settled in the West Indies with a number of colonies there, are known to have kept a close watch on the Raleigh colonists and what they were doing, but they did not attack. This has been proved by a thorough examination of the Spanish archive. Another theory advanced by one of the leading historians of this area is that they built a vessel and sailed back toward England and were lost at sea. This also is highly improbable. The treacherous waters in the vicinity of, the, of Cape Hatteras, known as the graveyard of the Atlantic, are not the type of waters in which you would want to begin a trip in a small vessel built by people who were not shipwrights, heading back across with no navigational equipment. Today, approximately 1,000 people live on Roanoke Island, and the lost colony remains a controversial topic. The U.S. Park Service established a National Historic Site here, and Ranger historian William Evans has definite opinions about the mystery. I'm sort of torn between two theories as to what happened to the Lost Colony. One, they think, I think that they either went south and lived on the Outer Banks with the friendly Hatteras Indians, became intermingled and absorbed into that colony and disappeared with that group when it died of smallpox generally in the 1700s or that the colony moved north towards the Chesapeake Bay, began to live friendly with a small tribe of Chesapeake Indians, but were violently massacred along with those Indians just before the Jamestown colony arrived in 1607. The theory that they lived with Indians is given credence by a story from the journal of Captain John Smith of the later Jamestown colony. They enjoyed good relations with the local Indians through the efforts of Captain Smith, who took the trouble to learn the Indians' language. On a visit to Chief Powhatan, the father of Pocahontas, Smith was told of white people traveling with friendly Indians who were caught in an inter-tribal war. All the whites were slaughtered, except for a group of seven, four men, two boys, and a young maiden. The 
seven whites managed to escape. These seven could have survived only by living among friendly Indians. And down through the years, there have been Indians in North Carolina, some with blue eyes, who claim to be descended from these first English settlers. If they did, in fact, live among the Indians, how can we trace their movement? In 1937, a number of stones were found that led in a trail from eastern North Carolina to northern Georgia. These stones were supposedly carved by Eleanor Dare as notes back to her father if he should return to look for the colony that uh, told what had happened to the colony, that her husband, Ananias Dare, had been killed by the Indians along with her child, Virginia Dare, and that she was being carried to North Georgia as an Indian princess to be married or to be given in, in marriage to an Indian chief. The musty basement of a small college for women may hold the long sought after answer. Something has been stored here that has been all but forgotten. In search of cameras traveled to Gainesville, Georgia to Bernal College. In 1937, a tourist in North Carolina uncovered a stone with words carved on it. He brought it to Bernal's history department. A $500 reward was advertised for anyone who found additional stones. The school was besieged with stones and ended up with 47. Most were obvious fakes. A national magazine published a story claiming the stones were all fakes. Embarrassed, the college put the stones in a basement where they've been gathering dust for more than 40 years. The first stone may be authentic, according to the present head of the history department, Dr. James Sutherland. The stone purports to tell the story of what happened to the lost colonist of Roanoke. And here you can see much better the wording on the stone. It says that Ananias Dare and Virginia went hence unto heaven 1591. Any Englishman show John White Governor, Virginia. Seventeen months after the original find, a man from Atlanta, a stonemason and uh, stone hauler, found a series of stones near Greenville, South Carolina, along the Saluda River. The fourth stone that he found is supposed to be the other stone mentioned on the reverse side of the original. This stone does contain the names of 17 dead, 15 on the back with Ananias and Virginia Dare on the front side, making a total of 17. I believe that the stones that were later found were obviously fraudulent. The evidence seems to certainly support that belief. However, this original stone, to my knowledge, has never been directly disproved. The Smithsonian Institute examined this original stone and could not find anything fraudulent. Experts cannot agree on the authenticity of any of these other stones. It is intriguing to think that one of these stones could be, like the Rosetta Stone of Egypt, an important link, a key to our past. Today's Roanoke Island has its legend of the ghost of Virginia Dare, the grandchild of Governor White. Legend has it that beautiful Virginia was betrothed to a young Indian hunter, but she was also loved by a very jealous medicine man. To prevent her from marrying his rival, he changed her into a deer. Later, unaware of the change, her true love shot and killed the deer with an arrow. There are those who say the ghost of Virginia Dare, sometimes a deer and sometimes a young maiden, appears in these woods on moonlit nights, trying but unable to tell us the answer to the mystery of what happened to the lost colony of Roanoke. It would seem that a cruel fate was against the colony from the beginning or at the very least, it suffered from a series of unfortunate coincidences. First, 
the lack of planning that did not properly supply them. Then, the stubborn queen who would not spare a single ship to help a tiny colony 3,000 miles away. Then, whatever event it was that caused the colonists to leave Roanoke. The storm that drove Governor White's ship away and the probable slaughter of most of the remaining colonists. And finally, if at least some of the dare stones are real, that none of them were found for 350 years. It would seem that fate definitely was against the unfortunate lost colony of Roanoke.